This is rubbish, this. It's the biggest load of crap I've ever seen. What's on the other side? <laughs> English for Aliens. In this introductory lesson, we'll be learning some simple words to acquaint ourselves with the language. First, tree. Tree. Now let's try it again. Tree. 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 Nearly. Tree. Now let's try a new word, car. Tree, tree, tree. <laughs> no car. K a r. T -t -r -e. Car. Car. <laughs> tree. Well, two out of three is not bad. Let's move on. Tree. Yes, very good. Tree. Yes, very good. Now let's try road. Car. Car. Tree. No road. some of the things we see in the classroom instead. Tree! 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 No, I don't think we'll find a tree in the classroom, will we? <laughs> oh, well, I think that's actually a little bit advanced for you. That's a picture of the baby Jesus. Baby Jesus! <laughs> well, that is good. Some real progress. So, how about window? Window. Mr. Chumley Warner. Good evening, Grayson. Who's that queer little chap you're holding? <laughs> this queer little chap I'm holding is called a cat. <laughs> yes. Now, tell me, Mr. Chumley Warner, who's that queer little chap you're holding? <laughs> this queer little chap I'm holding is called a dog. Isn't that a man's best friend? Yes. <laughs> Today, we're going to be looking at the wonderful world of animals and how man can profit from knowing more about them. The elephant of Africa. This mother elephant, like so many housewives, never forgets her daily chores and is a devoted mother of two and makes excellent ivory trinkets. <laughs> this rare bird of paradise is one of only 300 thought to be left in the world. So, ladies, you'll be the talk of Ascot with one of his feathers in your hat. <laughs> yes, animals and humans can help each other to build a better life for all of us. Chosen from hundreds of applicants, these happy chaps especially volunteered to take part in valuable medical experiments. <laughs> yes, it works. Man and animal working in harmony together. Animals can now be used to help research into valuable cosmetics. See the effect of paraffin-based vanity cream on this hedgehog. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Diggywinkle. Not quite right yet. Now a chance to answer some of your letters. Mrs. Anstruther of Carsholton asks, Can a bullet kill a parrot? <laughs> yes. But make sure you don't do it too near any household crockery. And Mrs. Neville of Chorley Under Tree writes, How high can a monkey jump? with its testicles wired up to electrodes. <laughs> Seven feet, Mrs. Lemon. Next week, I'll be telling you how to remove monkey stones from your ceiling. <laughs> to be or not to be. 
That is the question. Oh, you don't want that as the question? <laughs> well, what is the capital of Peru? That's a proper question. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is... Lima! No that is the answer. <laughs> Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows... Oh, you don't want to suffer slings and arrows. <laughs> Those slings and arrows coming at you, you want to get out of the way pretty sharply. You want to hide behind a nice rockery or an ornamental shrub. Or to take arms against a sea of troubles and, by opposing, end them. Eh? <laughs> to die. To sleep. Oh, you don't want to die to sleep, you never wake up. You want to take a nice sedative, that'll set you off properly. To sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. Now, I do not believe you want to rub there, do you? <laughs> you want to rub somewhere more easily accessible. Will you shut up? Shut up? You don't want to say shut up. That's not the way, is it, eh? Eh? Oh, I see, I'm going to have to come up here and show you how to do it properly, aren't I? Eh? Hey! Hey! <laughs> to be indoors or outdoors on a lovely day like this, that is the question. <laughs> what is the capital of Peru? That is also a very good question. <laughs> Whether to take up spray against outrageous green fly. <laughs> or to take night nurse to sleep. <laughs> to sleep. A chance to dream. Only you don't want to do that. <laughs> what you want to do is rub the easily accessible spot with a soothing balm or ointment. Lima, that is the answer. Great bit of rock and roll there, and uh, I love rock and roll. It's drainpipe trouser-tastic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was Runaway there, the old Del Shannon song. I like the bit where he goes, oh, wah, 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 mate. <laughs> I like that bit too, mate, the bit where he goes, oh, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> and I hear that old Del, wah, 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 wah. Shannon's making a bit of a comeback. Uh, well, he'll have about six feet to go, mate. He's a wah, 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 dead. <laughs> Great shame. Great shame. Great shame. Uh, but uh, what about this uh, general election palaver, mate? Oh, don't talk to me about the general election, mate. It's a load of old nonsense, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> I had this bloke come round my house the other day. Vote for me, he said. All right, mate, I will, I said. Then ten minutes later, another bloke turned up. He said, don't vote for him, vote for me. I said, why can't you two get together and make up your mind who I'm supposed to vote for? <laughs> and I slammed my daft door and left him a standard there on my potty porch to be bad mansion in Bonkers, Buckinghamshire. <laughs> <laughs> Wise words, mate. Uh, Labour and Conservative, you can have too much choice. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, uh, what, what about hanging, mate? Uh. Hanging? That's something these politicians are always banging on about, isn't it? Should we uh, bring back a hanging? <laughs> well, uh, I think we should, but only for people who kill policemen and DJs. <laughs> It would be a deterrent, mate. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, what do you think about war, mate? Uh, is war a good thing or is it a bad thing? It's a bad thing, mate. Right, war. I mean, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Uh -huh. Say it again. <laughs> war, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. I've got a solution to world war, mate. Have you, mate? I have. Right, right. Instead of a fighting and an arguing all the time, why don't all the various different governments get together and sit round a big table and have a good old pop trivia quiz? <laughs> and then uh, whoever's the winner wins, and uh, what they say goes. You be Yasser Arafat. Right. Right, so I'm Bob Mughouse. <laughs> so, Yasser, you're not nervous, are you? Mm, I hope not. <laughs> right, and here comes your question. Who was the creative mastermind behind the Wombles and the Hunter of the Snark? Mad Mike Bonkers back. Congratulations, Yazzie. <laughs> You've just won the Gaza Strip. <laughs> Mike has Mungus solution made. Uh, but, you know, uh, I've got a solution to a major world problem of my own. It's the Mike Smash morning show solution to world famine. What is it, mate? Sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, ham or cheese? That doesn't matter, mate, as long as they've got a little bit of pickle in them. Right. <laughs> right. Anyway, I know which bloke I'd like to be Prime Minister, and there's three of them. Mr Bogman, Mr Turner, and the Right Honourable Sir Jeremy Overdrive, B.A. D. Phil, Fellow of the Royal Institute of Rock. You ain't seen nothing yet, nor's he. Let's go. <laughs> So, uh, tell me, mate, are you going to be uh, exercising your prerogative in one of those little booths tonight? <laughs> Not tonight, mate. No, I've got to go out and vote. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to English for Aliens. In lesson two, we'll be learning about some of the things we see when we're out and about. <laughs> No, that's a lamppost. Tree! All right, it's a bloody tree then. <laughs> What's this then? <laughs> it's a shop. Three pound? Shop. Shop! Yes, a shop. You buy things in a shop. <laughs> no, no, we're just learning the words. Chuck it, chuck, 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 chuck. All right, since you've done that, let's have a look at some of the things you bought in the shop. Yeah. Yes, all right, we'll let that one go. Now, what's this outside the shop? No, 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 no. <laughs> right, let's have a look at this dog. Let's get on with the lesson now. What new word have we learned today? Tree. No, not tree. Shop. Shop. Shopping today. Yes. All right. This. That's quite enough shopping. Now, what, that, what are you looking at? No. No. Please stop that. No. No. Stop. no, no please. No. Jesus Christ. <laughs> two up. In this unique documentary, we've been following the lives of two children. One born to an upper class couple living in Hampshire. We're going to call him Timothy. After his uncle. His uncle Arthur. <laughs> And the other, born to an unmarried working class couple living in a condemned mobile home on Gunner Street's refuse tip. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think of your new baby, Wayne? It's alright. It's alright. Burbeam! <laughs> Tim is now seven. How has he changed? Uh, Tim, what do you think of working-class people? Well, I think they smell because they don't have baths. <laughs> because, unfortunately, their baths are full of coal. And they live in hovels and they don't treat their servants very well. And really, it's kind of not to educate them at all because it gives them aspirations. And some of them have no shoes and they use buses and their crockery is too thick. And they're very stupid. You obviously have a lot of strong opinions, Tim. I'm not Tim, you oik. I'm Giles. Tim's over there in the corner talking to the lampstand. Come on, do you like maths? Tim, uh, Tim, would you say that for you, class is a problem? Yes, trouble problem. I'm, I'm hopeless at everything. Tables, <laughs> spelling, memory tests... Tables, spelling, <laughs> Silver. Yes, sir. Slob. Slob. Slob! I ain't smoking a thing! <laughs> nice but thin. Nice but thin. Nice but thin. Nice but di- <laughs> Nice but thin. 
Hij spat dim. Nicholson. Ja. At age seven, our two future citizens of Britain were introduced to each other in a playground. Oh, do you like pets? I've got a hamster. Well, I've got lice. When I grow up, I want to be a footballer and an Olympic runner. And I want to fight in the war and I want to drink in pubs and I want to be Bruce Lee and I want to fight in pubs like my dad. And most of all, I want to be a managing director of a crisp factory. This is Wayne's report. Uh, as you can see, last term we put could do better. This term, we were wrong. We couldn't do better. <laughs> Tim is now 12, and his family have put him down at public school. Uh, why do you want to come to Eton? It's a long family tradition. Yes, but as far as I'm aware, none of your family have ever been to Eton. Yeah, but we've all come along for this interview. <laughs> Tim is finally accepted for Chartbury, a minor public school in Dorset, provided he gets through the entrance. <laughs> Which he does at the third attempt. At 12, Wayne has decided to opt out of formal education. Wayne, what did you come away from school with? Uh, a telly, overhead projector, a bottle of sherry and a couple of goldposts. <laughs> he now spends most of his time with his new friend, Wayne Nettle. We're going to be engaged. No, we ain't. All right, girls. I fancy him. <laughs> I'm going to play football, man. Tim at 12 was still in a single-sex school. Tim, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> no comment. I've always been very keen on football. Attention, nice but dim. Right. You have one hour for your physics exam. And when I say so, turn your papers over. Right. Turn your papers over. Blank. That's peasy. At 17, Wayne and Wayne Atta are still together, and as devoted as ever. Do you like that bleeding shirt? I am a new romantic! <laughs> Get off! Tim, you're 17 now. Do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> Tim, what do you want to do when you leave school? Well, very keen on being an astronaut. Why is that? I've always liked horses. <laughs> and I'll find out more about it in my year off when I'm 18, between my O levels and O level retakes. What about Wayne Atta? We're going to get married. We are not. We are! We are not! Yeah, we're getting married. And are you hoping to have children? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> and what sort of world would you like them to grow up in? Disney World. <laughs> At 21, Wayne declines to take part in the documentary for ethical and practical reasons. <laughs> While Tim has gone off round the world. We meet them again at 28. Looking back, Tim, what would you say was your greatest regret? Tim? Oh, oh um... I think probably uh, going round the world. Well, that sounds a strange thing to regret. Well, I meant to get the shuttle to Edinburgh. It was a long flight. Ended up in uh, Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> sounds quite like Edinburgh on the, on the tannoy. And do you have a girlfriend yet? <laughs> <laughs> so, Tim, do you think you have anything in common with Wayne? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, just found out we're both the same age. It's quite remarkable. I mean, uh, <laughs> got uh, quite a lot of mutual friends, like you, uh, cameraman, and uh, this man with the cuddly toy. <laughs> yeah, that's one. 
Wayne, you're now 28 and unemployed. What do you think you'll be in seven years' time? 33, you know, obviously. <laughs> well, that's where we differ, you see, because I'll be 48. <laughs> <laughs> Maths never really was my bag. Whatever, I'll, I'll still be at the Treasury. You work at the Treasury? <laughs> yeah. Chancellor's an old mate of my dad. What's his name? Norman Lamont. No, my dad. Nice to him. Lamont, do you think so? <laughs> oh, he struck me as a brainy old coat. <laughs> Bloody good bloke, actually. Do, do you know him? Uh. This has been a glimpse of Britain's future. Sad, isn't it? Not safe round here for that people. Good. Yeah. Give me your money. Yeah, there's nothing in here but meat and old tissues. You bloody cheapskate. Get out of here. When you arrive at a dinner party, your host will hold his hand out to you. How do you do? This is not dinner. This is to shake. If you serve soup to start, drink it using the soup spoon. But remember, soup is... <laughs> when you finish your first course, wait patiently for your hostess to offer you more. Do not... <laughs> Use a knife and fork to eat. No, to eat with. <laughs> Between mouthfuls, remember to make polite conversation. Yes, very good. <laughs> oh, yes, I've got one of those little Honda Civics. It's a beauty. I used to have a Jag, but the Civic's much easier to park. But it's got car steering and automatic, just like the Jag, and the insurance system. No, no, if you are bored by a conversation, just smile politely and say, Really? How interesting. Really? How interesting. <laughs> when you decide it's time to go home, you'll have to think of an excuse for why you have to leave early, or your hostess will be offended. And Roger turned to me and said... Really? How, how interesting. <laughs> really? How interesting. <laughs> Let's go and win some money. Let's have your pets, Madame and Monsieur. Moving on 69. My favourite number. <laughs> yeah. Tick-tock. Woof, woof. Down there. Toot, toot. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Princess Flora from the little-known state of Azaguta in Africa. Hello. Or rather, perhaps I should say, Mkundunkwanda. <laughs> Say, Princess, you really are bang on. Flora, did you say? That is right. I like that. Is it a spread and half the calories? <laughs> <laughs> My darling. Bad luck, Sam. You loved her, didn't you? Yes. Is she? That's a 34B. <laughs> this is personal now. No, Sam. You stay out of this. You're too close. 0.22 Bulgarian Luger, unless I'm very much mistaken. But why? Her diamonds. Diamonds? Stolen. What the? And he's getting away! Damn. The swine. He's escaped in a helicopter. 
Champagne, anyone? Capital idea. Down, his parachuted into a waiting car. He's got to start a start of us. won't catch him. I didn't win four Grand Prix in a row for nothing. Don't look now. I think we're being followed. You're right. We'll have to try and shake him off, Sidney. Concentrate the sun's rays onto the fuel pipe. Shot, Sidney. Yes, but he's heading on that cliff. We'll never be able to follow him on the bus. We'll have to carry on on foot. <laughs> he's gone in there. <laughs> Whoever you are, the game's up. Ha! <laughs> You'll have to get past my lady mudrisse was first. Jessica Dyke, leader of the Women's Liberation Army. He does. You playboys can't get round me that easily. You shouldn't have shown up here. Now I'm afraid I'm going to have to kill you. But why? Steal all the diamonds in the world so that all the women will turn into men. Simple but fiendishly clever. First, I've got to get rid of you meddling playboys. You're insane. You'll never get away with this. Oh, won't I? No, you won't. Oh, very clever, Sydney. But I'm afraid you're too late. The days of male supremacy are over. I'll show the world that women are stronger, more intelligent. Look out, a mouse. <laughs> the winnings, monsieur. No, no. I'd like them all to go to charity. Well, Lady Mud Wrestlers in need. <laughs> Going down? Feed the bread to the ducks, not the other way around. 